For example, some of you, you, you may be married to a pastor. When you were marrying him, you didn't think he was going to be a pastor. Then he became a pastor. Now you are in a dilemma because you didn't marry a pastor. He became a pastor. Now his life is looking changed. All the plans that you had are not going in the same direction. You, the, 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 the image you had of your family, all the holidays you were supposed to be taking. <laughs> All the family meetings you wanted to have. <laughs> you can't believe they are gone. Every time church, church, church. <laughs> Where is our family? Where is our family? The children cannot see you. <laughs> I can't even see you. <laughs> Listen, let me talk to you. Listen and be wise. Do you prefer him dead? Make up your mind. Do you want him dead? Because if he's dead, you won't have him. He'll be gone. Then you can really be free. I don't mind if he dies. Ah, there you go. How selfish you are. How selfish you are. Don't you understand? There's a greater thing to live for. You've got to learn to live for something bigger than yourself. You've got to live for something bigger than yourself. At the beginning, you may not know it. But if you are patient, if you are patient, one day, the Lord will talk to you too. I remember this, your husband said something. She said she was on the same bed with her husband when they were just a young couple. So on the same bed with him. When Jesus appeared to him, He went and talked with Jesus. So she said, Lord Jesus, tears said you appeared to him. Why didn't you appear to me too? We're married. He was changed. He said, the moment he came out of the room, I knew something had happened to him. This is our own story. I heard it from her. She said, the moment he came out of the room, I knew something had happened to him. He said, he was changed. His desires were changed. Everything about him changed. He said, but I, my problem started. He said, I was wondering, so where is my place? So who am I? Tear has found his purpose. What is my purpose? Then she discovered something. Because she said, Jesus, you have to appear to me too. But Jesus didn't appear to her until 30 years later. So she said, in the meantime, what was I doing? She said, I learned something. I discovered whatever God said to Tear. He said to me, because if he said it to him, what I had to do was to accept that instruction as coming to both of us. Then I said, show me how to do it. So T.L. showed her how to do it. She learned from him and began to, because it took 30 years before Jesus would appear to her. In the meantime, what are you going to be doing? 30 years later, Jesus appeared to her. By then, all her youthfulness had gone. Do you understand? She was now calm. <laughs> but you know when, you, when you're young, you're like, I can't understand. Mm, mm. <laughs> it's worship time. Your husband is going like this on the platform. 
Hallelujah. <laughs> because you are thinking, you're thinking, you're thinking. After this place now, what next? Your life is just, what next? What next? What next? I'm just following you to church. What next? We're going to church every Sunday. What next? What next? Why is my life? This complaint will not take you anywhere. You can complain like this 30 years, like that woman. 30 years, Jesus kept quiet. Appeared later, 30 years. And didn't even apologize. <laughs> he didn't apologize. He just continued business as usual. Just appeared, appeared to her as if he had been appearing since. He didn't say, I'm sorry, I'm 30 years late. <laughs> Just gave her further instructions. No apologies. Listen. Decide to make your home a happy place. Okay? Make it a happy place by choice. It's got to be by choice. If you want to make it a sad place, you will make it a sad place for yourself. And you know what? You'll be the one who is living in that home. You destroyed your home. Don't destroy your home. Don't act crazy. Are you hearing me? Don't act crazy. Don't. Do the right thing. Do the wise thing. And the good thing for you is that you can listen to me while I'm talking to you. So it works for you. So it works for you. Because if, if a man or a woman is truly called of God, he's the only one that can destroy himself if he does the wrong thing. But if he doesn't, no lie on earth can destroy him. No false accusations can destroy him. Those are not a problem. False accusations don't trouble me because they, don't, they have no power. Don't destroy your home. Don't destroy your home. It is very difficult for a pastor to preach. That's why I'm helping you. Because it is hard for you to preach this message in your home. How do you tell your husband or your wife this is what the Bible says. They think you are defending yourself. So it's very hard. So oftentimes it takes someone else that both of them can listen to and tell them the truth. But only the humble one will listen. If both are humble, they will listen. If there is no humility there, they will not listen. Then at the end you feel so terrible because you didn't listen when you should have listened. Wisdom is a defense. Yeah. All right? And then do something for yourself. Do something for yourself. As long as you criticize each other, it will be difficult for you to pray together. Because you are critics of each other. So when it's time to pray, this one goes to that room to pray. The other one is walking to the other side to go and pray. They are both going to talk to the same God. Because they are critics of each other. They don't like what each other is doing. That should stop. Do you hear me? That should stop. Don't be critics of each other. Don't be critics of each other. You're helpers of each other. Helpers, not critics. If you are helpers of each other, you'll be so happy to say to the other, let's pray. And you both pray. And you both know what the Lord is saying. And you both be... Why is it that people are more united when they are... When they are... Um, when they are fighting someone? <laughs> They're very united. For example, if they're fighting the church, they're very united. The two people that you can't put together in one room. Once it's a criticism against someone, uh -huh, I said that Chief Osha is a madman. <laughs> then the other one is coming from that. They are both in agreement for the time being because they have someone they both don't like. 
Then after in unity, they destroy him. They will still fight themselves. <laughs> because in heart, they're not united. Don't be critics of each other. Be helpers of each other. That's what you married for. Are you hearing me? You married to help each other. That's what you said you wanted to do. That's what you said. So help each other's faith. That's number one. Help each other's faith to grow in the Lord. Don't allow the other come home criticizing what he should not be criticizing. Save him from death. And you save your wife from death.